One of the most prolific of all American holidays had its genesis, right here on the shores of Maine, more than 169 years before the United States became a country, and nearly 213 years before Maine won her statehood. On July 31st of 1607, over a dozen years before pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock, two ships arrived at the mouth of the Kennebec River, filled with colonists from England who sought to settle in the New World. The two ships, the Gift of God and the Mary and John, made landfall at what is now known as Fort Popham in Phippsburg, Maine. Over 120 men and boys stepped onto the rocky coast of the North American continent and began to carve out a homestead on the seaside of the Maine wilderness. They swiftly elected a leader of the colony, and George Popham became their president. They began to set up a fortification of tall fence and built their cabin-like homes within the protective walls of the fort. They also began to harvest the necessary lumber to build a new ship by which to transport harvested natural resources of lumber, furs, and other natural commodities back to England. On their return, they would then bring back necessary supplies and new settlers to join the settlement at Fort George on the Popham shore. Local food supplies came from harvests of berries, roots, and local game as well as the abundance of seafood caught right at the shore. Any supplies of salt, flowers, and grains brought from England were used to preserve fish and meat and for baking of breads and the fermentation of meat. Mussels, clams, crab, lobster, and fish from the surrounding waters provided ample supplies of fresh seafood. Gardens, foraging, and hunting rounded out the dietary needs of these immigrant pilgrims. Years ago, these pioneers had made friends with local natives while the colonists built their new settlement. Nahandia and his wife Skidwaris both welcomed these English immigrant pioneers and began forming a friendship. Their advice and teaching allowed these pilgrims to better use the land and make better harvests from the sea. By November of that year, the colonists' settlement had progressed well and was nearly ready to weather the settlers' first main winter. The ships, Gift of God, and the Mary and John were about to return to England and nearly half of the colonists, who came only to build the settlement, were ready to return to England. These colonists had much to be thankful for, and they soon organized a feast by which to celebrate, to welcome their new friends, and to say goodbye to the old friends who were returning home to England. These Popham pilgrims also invited Nahandia and Skidwaris, and they also welcomed Nahandia's brother Kashabes, and another native friend, named Amonquin. Nearly 130 people in all gathered there on the Kennebec and partook of a feast of thanksgiving. The special harvest of lobster, fish, berries, wild game, breads, and vegetables adorned the many handmade tables with the foods and drink of the feast. Many prayers and speeches were delivered, and special thanks were offered to all, with special reverence offered to God. By the next day, both the gift of God and the Mary and John lifted anchor, set sail, and slowly slipped from sight as their journey back across the Atlantic was hastened by the approaching start of winter weather. The rest of the story is one of hard work, courage, and a struggle to survive a brutal New England winter. Sacrifice, sickness, and death was an endured hardship for these English colonists. And they were not alone, as other settlers in a more southern area on the Atlantic coast had also met with hardships in their own settlement at Jamestown, in what would become Virginia. Yet, despite the harshness of the Maine winter, these settlers worked daily to cut firewood, to hunt and fish for fresh food, and they worked to build a new ship, a pinnace, they called the Virginia. Stay right where you are. We will be right back with the conclusion of our story. Would you like to be a contributor to the Stories from Maine podcast? We are currently looking for segment personalities in a number of categories. If you would like to know more, or if you have an idea for your segment, send us an email at storiesfrommaine at gmail.com and tell us about your idea, or ask for our present list of wanted segment contributors.
Remember, that's stories from Maine at gmail.com. We hope you are enjoying our Stories from Maine inaugural podcast. We plan to bring you many more, but we could use your help. If you are enjoying this podcast and want more episodes to air, let us know by liking, subscribing, and commenting. And, you can email us at storiesfrommaine at gmail.com and help us to gauge your interest so we may sculpt the content we record. Our next Stories from Maine podcast will air on December 1, 2024. You can follow Stories from Maine on YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, and Facebook at Stories from Maine. And you can get Lori Suzanne Dell's book through booksellers everywhere and through Amazon. And now, the conclusion of our story. By the spring of 1608, the colonists had suffered for nearly six months through a brutal Maine winter in a hastily erected fortress settlement on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. Sadly, their leader President George Popham had died, leaving no recognized leader to steer the fledgling colony. The settlers had had enough. When the Mary and John returned from England with fresh supplies for the colony, the decision had already been made. The colonists would sail back to England on the Mary and John and on their own ship, the first main made ship, the Virginia. By October of 1608, one last Thanksgiving was likely held in Phippsburg, as these colonists, seamen, and local natives all gathered one last time on the New England shore. Then, Nahandia and his family bid goodbye to the surviving Popham colony as they all sailed back to England. Although their time at Popham was brief, their story lives on today as legendary firsts in New England lore, a first in early American history, and as reminders of who we Americans are today as we continue to celebrate our own day of Thanksgiving each year. In 1918, the New York Times newspaper issued an article where they declared that the first Thanksgiving was held at the Popham Colony in 1607. Then, in 1985, President Ronald Reagan delivered a holiday declaration, a proclamation of Thanksgiving. In this official proclamation, President Reagan briefly described this first Thanksgiving celebration, this great genesis for our continued American holidays, which was first held on the shores of the Kennebec River at Phippsburg, Maine. Today, a recently built replica of the historic ship, Maine's own Virginia, the first ship ever built in North America, is on display in the city of ships at Bath, Maine. This floating classroom was launched in 2022, and you can board this ship today to learn more about these first English colonists at Popham. And thus, right here on the rocky coast of Maine, was born a true American holiday and a true and legendary United States tradition, as well as one of the greatest of our stories from Maine.